Hey guys, disclaimer time. One, if you do not want to be spoiled, then I would leave. But if you don't care or you read the book, then I would stay. Second, if you loved Red Queen or even really liked it, I wouldn't watch this video. I mean, if you loved it in a passionate sense, I would not stay for this video because there are no, I know there's books that I really love and I don't like watching negative reviews of them. Negative reviews that are gonna be like this, at least. So I'd also leave because you know what? This book isn't the worst thing I've ever read. It isn't. I just had a lot of problems with it. And I'm going to talk about that. And I'm going to get frustrated. And I think Victoria Aveyard is a good writer. I just don't particularly think that she's a very good storyteller or a very original storyteller. All right, that's done. Let's get started. Red Queen. Oh, Red Queen. I bought you because you sounded interesting. The plot sounded interesting. If you don't know what plot is, it's basically about a girl who lives in the society of red bloods and silver bloods, and red bloods are sort of the working class oppressed group, and the silver bloods have literal silver blood and have magical supernatural abilities, and they're in noble houses, and they're the ruling class, and she is this rando red person that has supernatural abilities, and it's like, what? Why? And it sounded interesting. It sounded interesting in a very fun sort of way, and I picked it up because I was like, why not? Even though I heard mixed reviews about it, I went, why not? And guys, I was on that negative side of the mixed reviews. This book did not do it for me. This book frustrated the hell out of me. And let's talk about why. First of all, remember how I did that video about strong female characters? The one that was before this? The main character, what's her face? What is her name? Something annoying. It's like uh, Marina, Marina, is not a strong female character. She does not feel like a real person. She feels like she has no personality. This is my opinion, obviously, but it feels like she's really there to drive the plot. Even though she's the main character and she's the, um, she's the, the, the narrator. It feels like she's there to drive the plot. It doesn't feel like she's there to, to do anything else. It doesn't feel like there's much character. It feels like all of her personality tra traits are wrapped into other people. Which, you know, in some ways that's what it's like in real life, but there are some traits that you have that have nothing to do with other people. And it feels like all she did was have emotions about other people. And never have emotions of her own. Does that make any sense? It never felt like she was having an emotion that was rooted in herself. It felt like she was always having emotions that were based on other people. It didn't feel like she was independent. It didn't feel like she was very well developed. It felt like she was an amalgamation of a lot of other YA heroines. It felt like a YA parody account. And I feel like probably other people have said this, but I haven't watched any of those reviews because I wanted to be my own person and I didn't want to accidentally steal. So I'm actually stealing from you other reviewers uh, who, re who reviewed this book in a negative light or whatever, or not negative light, then I'm sorry, but I didn't want to, like, ruin this. Anyway. The point is, though, it felt like she was a little bit Katniss. She was a little bit Triss. She was a little bit Juliet. And those three characters are pretty good. They're pretty good characters. Triss isn't my favorite, but they're pretty good. Katniss has a personality. Of course, she does feel like sometimes like a plot device, but she has a personality. She's kind of bitchy. She's kind of mean. She kind of, she's not like the best person in the world, you know? And then you have like Juliet from Shatter Me, who is broken, who is whiny, who is insecure, but she has a personality. You know what, you know? And it felt like Marina never really fully developed. Sure, she got angry and she got upset, but what was so unique about her? She was a thief? Cool. And she was a little bit rough and tumble? Cool. And she was easily trusted people? Cool. There wasn't really much there. There was no real personality that grounded her into real life, which really bothered me. Secondly, the love interests, 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 there's three in this book. I would love to read a YA dystopian novel that had no love interests. You know, realistic YA was happening uh, over the weekend, and we were all talking about how it would be great if we read a YA novel where the main protagonist, lady female, has no love interest. Wouldn't that be so cool? And in this book, she has three love interests. She has Killhorn, her childhood best friend and overall sassy, smug guy who has a chip on his shoulder. You know that guy. We all know him. Gale. 
<coughs> Gale, and who's like a really good guy. And then we have, ooh, we have the two Prince brothers, Maven, who is dark and mysterious, but he's kind and he's sweet and he's like Loki. He's a lot like Loki. And then you have Cal, who is Thor, who is really, really loyal and really kind and really steadfast in his beliefs. It was a very Thor and Loki, that brother relationship. Almost exactly. And what bothered me about these characters, what it was... It, it felt like they were just little cookie cutter characters that I've read a million times. I've read those characters a million times in a million other dystopian novels and 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 just life. And I know that art is derivative in some way. A lot of art comes from other art and we're always inspiring each other. But there's some things that are so derivative that it doesn't feel like they're adding anything new to the picture. And this book really felt that way. The love interest also it just, it felt like it would move too fast. I would have understand if she found, like, at the end of the novel when I really love Killhorn. If, if that was set up a little bit. But I could understand that because she'd known Killhorn her whole life, or however he says him. But the fact that she loved both Maven and Cal, which is fine, you can love two people at the same time. There's nothing wrong with that. That's something that people do. They had known each other for a month. A stressful month, sure. But to love somebody that quickly just seems a little bit ridiculous. And the fact that she has always, at the end of the novel, she alludes to always loving Cal after a month is stupid. It's stupid and it just feels unauthentic. Because I'm sorry, sure teenagers love quickly and they love intensely, but a month really, 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 really? I don't, I don't see that. I don't get that. What else? Okay, the plot. The plot was ridiculous, and it had a lot of plot holes in my opinion, and it felt like a big, kind of a mess. Um, you know, the whole plot is that she has these magical powers, and that she is, uh, she's red, and she's, like, supposed to be beneath, and she gets plucked out of obscurity by the prince, and taken to, to the, the, the summer house, the noble summer house, and accidentally show these powers she's never seen, this power of electricity, and everybody's like, oh no, and... And they all like, oh, you, let's have fun, da da do. <laughs> That's a great description. And then she becomes betrothed to Maven, while Cal gets betrothed to the classic bitchy, powerful girl who hates everyone. Woman. Girl. And the whole plot um, is, is, I mean, I guess at root it's fine. It's about this underground revolution trying to overtake the, 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 the nobles trying to overtake, overtake the, the oligarchy, that's not, the monarchy, that's it. It's almost like an oligarchy, but the monarchy. And they're trying to overtake them. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what most dystopian novels, especially the Y bend, are about. But what I think makes this particularly derivative is, is, is the amalgamation, like I said, of the characters, but also the plot. You have... <laughs> You have these people with special abilities, and you don't know where their special abilities really come from. Like, a la um, Unravel Me and Shatter Me, the Shatter Me series. Even then you know where the powers come from, and it, it kind of makes sense. They came from, like, some radiation. But you have no idea where these powers came from. Like, where did they come from? Where, where, where does this, why is this a thing? And why did Red, I don't get this. What? Oh, no. Uh. And then you have the whole <laughs> classic, oh... <laughs> Teenagers starting a revolution. Okay, now this again is a is a part of teen YA, but it felt even more annoying in this book. I think it's because of the fact that the entire time you're like, you guys, what are you doing? Why are you starting this revolution? You're a bunch of teenagers. And I think there were adults involved, but to put your entire revolution on a couple teenagers just seems ridiculous to me. I'm a teen, I'm 19, and I wouldn't even trust myself to remember to get milk. Like, why are we putting this all on some teenagers? I don't get that. I feel like this review is like going all over the place, but it's all about how derivative this book is. Okay, there were some things I liked, and I want to talk a little bit about things I liked. There wasn't a lot of things I liked, but I will say the pacing was fine. It was quick, it was fast, it was what you expected from this book. The writing was fine, it was okay, whatever. It wasn't like anything to write home about, write home about, but it was pretty decent and solid. Three, I really liked the queen. She was deliciously evil, and I enjoyed that aspect of her. 
but it didn't feel like she was gray enough. It almost felt like she was too evil, which I didn't love. I would have loved her to have a little more depth, if you know what I mean. And finally, that's it. The ending wasn't horrible, I guess. Um, there's so much more I could say about this book, but I don't want to make this video too long. But I will end with this. Red Queen is a book that felt like it was written, or really it was published to make money. I felt like this book just che like checked off points. Um, annoying main character with no real personality, three love interests who increase romantic tension, a convoluted plot that is ridiculous, teenagers starting a revolution, an ending that is precarious and, and ends on a train where you don't know where things are going, literally and figuratively. It felt like it just checked off things from a list, and I don't like that in a novel. I want to be surprised. I never was really surprised in this book. It just felt too derivative. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. What are your thoughts if you read Red Queen? What are your thoughts on what I talked about? I will say that I respect Victoria Aveyard, and I feel like I need to say that whenever I do a negative review, because I do respect her, and if you like this book, that's awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed the experience. I just personally didn't. Have a wonderful day. Bye!